In the middle of Book 7, Chapter 14 of The Politics, at 1333a, Aristotle discusses the relation between virtue, education, and free government. In this video, I will give you a short quote from this chapter, then talk briefly about its implications for our understanding of freedom. Previously in this chapter, Aristotle observes that there is no one class of men that is vastly superior to all other men in terms of ethical goodness. For this reason, there can be no permanent ruling class in politics. Instead, men must rule and be ruled by turns. Then he writes, We conclude that from one point of view, governors and governed are identical, and from another, different and therefore their education must be the same and also different. For he who would learn to command well must, as men say, first of all learn to obey. As I observed in the first part of this treatise, there is one rule which is for the sake of the rulers, and another rule which is for the sake of the ruled. The former is a despotic, the latter a free government. But since we say that the excellence of the citizen and ruler is the same as that of the good man, and that the same person must first be a subject and then a ruler, the legislator has to see that they become good men, and by what means this may be accomplished, and what is the end of the perfect life. Let's walk through this quote bit by bit. Men who govern and men who obey are identical, in the sense that the same man performs both functions at different times in life. And they are different in that each has a different function while he is ruling or obeying. Rule for the sake of the rulers is despotic government, while rule for the sake of the ruled is free government. Obviously, then, we want to establish an education system that allows men, when they serve as temporary rulers, to rule for the sake of the ruled and not for their own advantage. This is what free government means, not that every man has a share in ruling, but that every man, when, when he has a share in ruling, rules for the sake of those others who do not rule. A system wherein each man waits his turn only to share in common plunder is not free, but despotic. In the final sentence, Aristotle makes three important points. First, the excellence of a ruler, the excellence of a subject, and the excellence of a good man are identical. I take this as a direct denial of one of Machiavelli's key claims, that a good ruler need not, in fact must not, be a good man. Second, the same person must be both ruler and subject. This is because there is no superior virtue among a single class of people, as previously mentioned. Also, he must be a subject first, and afterwards a ruler. This suggests that each person will learn his first lessons about political power by being its object, not its agent. Third and most important, Aristotle concludes three conditions for the legislator of a city. One, he must see that they, rulers and subjects become good people, two, he must know the means for making them good people, and three, he must know the end of a perfect human life. That is, the legislator must have a correct and comprehensive grasp of philosophical ethics. He must know what the good life is, how to achieve it, and what practical steps are needed to educate the rulers and subjects of the city in virtue. From this short quote, we see that formation in virtue for both citizens and rulers will be a central element in the politics of a free government. The legislator or constitution maker of a free city must be someone who knows the human good and how to bring it about in others. In short, he must be a philosopher, a teacher of philosophical wisdom, and a good man. That's the end of this brief look at a passage from Aristotle's Politics. Thanks for watching today. Goodbye.